In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends, I've been thinking about the wonderful ministries you've had in this church. In my own experience, there's been Doug Gordon, I was speaking of earlier, Cameron Brett, and uh, the introduction was so kind and uh, favorable to me, thank you for that, but you left out the, my one real claim to fame, which was I was interim moderator here uh, at the time of the calling of Cameron Brett, and I've always been happy about that, bragging about it. And Doug Blakey, I used to say that I knew Doug uh, when he was a teenager, and he always told me that made him nervous when I talked about that. But together, under these gifted leaders, dedicated leaders, you have been faithful to your calling to preach and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now you're in a period of transition. You and the presbytery will be selecting another minister to lead you in the same direction, but in very different times, facing new challenges and seeing new opportunities. When I heard the gospel lesson and read it, I, I was thinking this is made for St. Andrew's Church in Fredericton. It sounds like it was written for you. I didn't choose it. It's in the lectionary. It's being read today in Christian churches around the world, this same gospel lesson. But here we have Jesus' instructions to disciples as they begin a new ministry, a new ministry with him the Messiah. Before we get to Jesus' instructions, we're given here an insight into Jesus' feelings. We're, we're rarely told about Jesus' feelings. You know, we're always being told about what he said or what he did or, or what someone said to him or did to him but rarely are we really let in on his inner thoughts or feelings. But on this occasion, we're being told what Jesus felt. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassionate for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep um, are notoriously a helpless lot. They have no fangs, no teeth, no claws, no quills. They're victims. And of course, they're easily frightened. Um, I learned in Scotland that the border collies that herd the sheep have to be taught not to bark. Because if they bark, they might scare the sheep to death, run them over a cliff or something. They can't take that barking, too easily frightened. Well, Jesus is feeling sorry for the people because they're so much like sheep. In so many ways, we are like 
these poor critters, so easily frightened, so easily led astray by bullies or dictators. We're not certain about what was going on in Jesus' mind about that made him feel so sorry for the people. But we know that the Jewish people at the time were living under a terrible imperial power. Uh, we say so many things favorable today about the Romans. Uh, what great engineers they were. They built such beautiful roads. Um, they were very uh, literary people, wrote beautifully, had wonderful art, great sculptures. Um, so many great things we can say about them, but they were a violent, uh, uncaring, uncompassionate lot when it came to their empire. They had zero compassion upon their colonial conquest. That must have been one of the sources of Jesus' feeling of compassion on his people. But look, Jesus could have been reading our newspapers today. He could have been watching our television because many things have changed since ancient days, but we're still a people who are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Human nature hasn't changed. We have refugees by the millions longing for the simple necessities of life, shelter, food, safe drinking water. In many parts of the world today, the disparity between the rich and the poor is greater than it was in the first century. Here in Canada, we're blessed with so many good things, so many material comforts. But even here, parents are worried to death about dangers of drug abuse with their children, uh, drug abuse even in early teenage ages. Young people are so often confronted with a society lacking in purpose or compassion or beauty. Even in the midst of plenty, so many of our citizens are deprived of the basic necessities. They're left out. Our native people, the unfairness, the selfishness that leads them, that leaves them out of so many things that we take for granted. So many people who are needing to be treated with kindness, who are not. When he saw the crowds, Jesus felt compassion on them. He feels the same compassion today. Jesus went on to say, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There are so many people out there who need help. So many young people here in New Brunswick who need some encouragement and support from us old people. They need to be told that when they're doing a good job of nurturing their children, we appreciate it. And they need to be given a helping hand when things are not going well. Refugees, you're doing a wonderful job here in Fredericton. I've been reading about it, hearing about it helping out families from the Middle East who have come here to uh, 
receive those basic necessities we all need. So you know how much more needs to be done for them and with them. We've already mentioned Native people. The needs there are so great for understanding, for simple kindness. For the sick, healthy people need to care for ill people. Mobile people are required to, to accomplish things for immobilized people. The harvest that Jesus is talking about has to do with things that are ripe. These things are ready. These things need to be accomplished. Uh, tasks are ready to be done. Human beings are ready. They are open to our embrace. People need all these kind of things we've mentioned to be done, but also they're longing to hear the good news of the gospel. That Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. They want to hear that, not only in words, but in deeds. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So what do we do about it? The gospel episode ends with Jesus' words to disciples. That's us. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out more laborers into the harvest. Doesn't sound like a, a great demand, does it? Only prayer, mere prayer, But can prayer be only? Can prayer ever be mere? To pray for other people requires first for us to want it for ourselves. To want for ourselves the compassion, the feeling of our Lord Jesus Christ. To know Christ the Lord has compassion on us. And to want that compassion for us to be given to all others. Not to some others, not to those we like, those we appreciate or those who can do something for us, but to want that compassion to go to all other people, even my enemies. And then we're able to pray that there will be more laborers. You're the laborers. We're the laborers in this story. So we pray that there will be more who care, more workers more helpers, more friends, more children, more shepherds. Here in this place, here in our time, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen.